Hello, Bungie, it is uh, time for me to do another Goop book review, which I have started on. I did a lot of go, and today I got coming in today, where I do reviews on the blog. So I have to tell you that for each blog review I do, for the most part, I'm going to try to have a video review that will go with it, to have a non spoiler version, if you, you could give to the final thought, but I do kind of give the way there, so why not have that version, if you want the non spoiler version to go. And I, and I got a few other random ones, like, okay, right now, I definitely know what the next review be, or, like, the one of the next one. I'm not gonna go crazy on doing everything, but I'll do what I can, do what I want. But anyway, for today, I have Goop Bump, Gary 2000, Return to Warland, look at number 13, you can keep it right there. Yep. So, that... For the week, month from the blog, for the monthly, our all time review, I reviewed the like I do at least two Gary Trevango book a year. So I have to a fair few left that I've reviewed. Um, and I did with Mummy Walk in January. And I thought that book was good, and I wanted to do one good and one not go good until I'm done with the ones that aren't good. After go um, <laughs> No, I think I gave the game away. I couldn't leave, but yeah, whatever. Go so after. The Kumat one, I think, is that good. So, for next, the book I have, I bought two Nug Blue Monk ones. So, there you go. Having fun. I don't know what the next Katoom book is going to do with it. It could be a good one, could be I want Monkey. But, anyway, I figured I picked this on my own because for like January, I t for the one earlier year, I tend to randomize or I have people vote. The other one, I pick myself typically. And that's why I did. I tried to finally get the one out of the way, because it's one that I have. So, I figured why not. And this one I've been wanting to review for a while. So, in anyway, a Return to Horrorland. As you can tell, it is the sequel to One Day at Horrorland, number 15, New Joe Peary. A big one that really came like a big thing. In the 2000s, there were Koopa Horrorland, Peary, you have a TV you have to go to the video game, more than one of them. It was a big thing, and I'll go change the tone of the going forward to be a bit more goofy, monster type stuff, but it left creepy to an extent. So it was kind of a big book that changed a lot, I feel like, for the beginning. And it was so big that, of course, you do have this. Before this, this came out, this came out in January 1999. Then in 1996, you have the peaking game Escape from Horrorland. And that was sort of the official sequel, could well produced and polished and pretty good. But I get to figure why not take another crack at it. So I had a good template to work from for ideal Billy. Maybe in terms of copyright, maybe a dumb thing they couldn't quite do. But at least they have some ideas. One Day of Horrorland, I think, is not one of my personal favorites, but I think it's pretty enjoyable. Maybe I'll get a review down the line. But I do like the concept of a mutant park run by modern and you get some fun ride and concept in there. So I feel like there's plenty of potential for more book to explore that, and I think the whole line book reading, for the most part, well flawed definitely, does that, expands the world. And I think God did Peaky Game, but then, so, now coming in the full book in Goop Bump 2000, Gary dedicated to doing new thing, going to darker places, and I feel like Doing a sequel to when they were a good avenue to maybe try some big thing. Go for plot. So, in When they Homeland, you had the Morick family, who was headed by our narrator, uh, Linky Morick, and then you have her brother Luke, his friend Clay, and the parents. Um, and then it had been kick month, kick month, against they escaped from Homeland, against they had One Day at Homeland, and they've been trying to get all that out of her mind, because lately they've been watching a TV show called The Strange Report, headed by Derek and Margot Strange, a hump and a wife team that go around sort of interviewing weird people. You know, they mention a lot of weirdo, they've like gone to a lick for a cat, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, heck one of them. Um, and they really enjoy the show. You know, when, um, when the one day, Derek and Margaret Strange actually show up at her house and they basically tell them that we heard about Horrorland and we heard that you, Horrorland is a good place that is very dangerous but jump around and move around and go hard to get at 
but we heard you escaped there. You're one of the few that escaped, but we want to recruit you to go to Warland and help us take them for you so we can expose them and get shut down for good. I'm not sure about them at first. Yeah, especially the mom. Especially can we tell mom you can't go there. We are gonna pretend to be a family of tourists and you can't come along for that. We have to pretend to be the parent. And mom was like, not sure at first. And that guy will give you ten thousand dollars because she's like, back enough to buy two to play for the kids. Uh, that joke store will probably be where. Go with that, they are off. They return to Horland. And, you know, they try to investigate something new that could be going on in the play and get exposed for good. And go at it basically the plot. Go the big thing, the first big thing to note of the book is that it establishes the goofball cinematic universe or the literary universe, really. Because there are specific references to previous book. But notably, there are two cameos. For those who don't know the book that well, I won't give them away, but there are two really cool cameos. For books that are bad and one of the characters is one I do not like. But it's kind of interesting to actually genuinely see to complete your character to kind of appear like that. And I think it's kind of a fun way to establish the Goblin Eater, which are coming people speculated. But I'll find finally the doubt of that. And the whole thing is all about this, but Vic did it first. And I really like the entire setup of the story, honestly, is that you have basically paranormal investigators who are used to establish a group of people that they have notice the current thing going on in your you know, if in the weird aspect and not the scary aspect and they want to with both Horrorlands that it got to really that's a great setup genuinely clever setup to do something different to bring in the paranormal kind of investigating people and they try to with both Horrorlands and I do feel like that's a good idea but fortunately for me I don't think it panned out very well I think the good is let down it's not terrible. I don't think it's even that bad. I think it's a little better than give it credit for. It had composite kind of will start with them. Well, I kind of a premise. I do like a few of some good moments. Um, their uh, Arnstein idea of a riot is still dubious, but I do feel like yeah, he had a good moment. I feel like there's one involving a dentist that if you're already scared of like needles and like pool poking in your mouth, I think that is a scary idea. And I thought that was kind of intense. Yeah, I do feel like in the back half, when, it, when the first half has them going on ride, the latter half has the horror of course finding out that, hey, the more family here will come down. What could be talk about them trying to escape the play or escape the horror? Back a bit more fun. You get a more interesting dynamic. You get a few moments. There's one situation involving a wolf turn, I thought was scary. Go, you have to think like that. When it's about the weird thing as they run from the horn, I think that go somewhat fun. I get a little more consistent. Because in the first half, you had a few decently amusing moments. Like, I enjoy their dynamic with Derek and Margot. They're, they're kind of like a, a healthy husband and wife dynamic for one figure as them. Go, but then you'd have moments that are just not as good. Go, it's nice that get could be more consistent. I don't think it stick the landing, but I feel like there are good and fun moments. I like the show. You know what's tough? I like the idea, and I like a few of the moments within. Hold on. Alright, then I have the problem to start coming. But, but unfortunately, if I ever down with uh, One in Gluke, who is, like, in general, just Bought dumber for coming again. I think like he just forgot that thinking of Horan are indeed real or very leaked. Forgotten come with how it worked. Go you come cock and really, really like, oh you pookie, the like, go on come ride, you know, we are going to be dangerous to an extent. And he feel so annoying. I feel like he was annoying in the first one, but I thought he would like grow character a little bit, but he dug into and that took annoying. Especially like he think like he forgot. Looking at the leads of the game, and Clay and, and Clay is at Capriflook and all in. Uh, they do remind you that Luke is the responsible one, the calm one, but Luke just feels like dumbed down, you know? Yeah. And that's a shame, and I feel like they're repeating. We're a situation where our two film orders for the first book go, 
and probably attraction don't have a game memorability like when come things in the first one that are scary they're fun they're memorable they're interesting a lot of stuff in here is even especially in the front half but when you get to the back half you have a few more some odd scenario it's like a part in a dungeon that is odd but something i'll get that and, you know so you do have the way moment but rehash moment um but then you get to the ending which is where it fumbled the ball you know they got up the idea that Horland might be up to something new but a kind gang under new myth management and they they show that their weakness from the first book might not work this time but they don't do anything with that at the end when you find out what's actually going on it pretty lame like in the first book they had a certain thing the horror was doing in this one we're not doing that as much and they don't replace it with anything either but continuity is good i don't think i remember every detail of her book or the book where i did you know <laughs> but it seems like it seems like they just forgot those details because that last minute they're like oh let's remind them that those things were there that's what it feels like because when you get to like looking good dark humor towards the end but then you find out what's going on again it's not really that interesting it's like a uh, very good twist involving some character that I think fit but it's not so predictable and I feel like what we do is not interesting and that's a big problem I think people can it gives up a bland and less interesting version of a setup we could have it had a really cool setup but it's generic and it ended up being standard and kind of weak version of what it could have been and for the world that got up in the first book feel smaller this time, which is not what you should do with a geek wall unless you really can like pull that off. Maybe if you want to take away a scum of the magic and do something interesting, maybe, but if you're not gonna do that then it's like uh it feels like you kind of like taking all the wonder out of what the first book did. Like it's a very imaginative idea, I feel like it's couple guard, but the one just the way some of that. I feel like that is a shame. And the ending is definitely a day of Gek Machina. I'm not beginning that. It come out of nowhere. It not got up at all. I get that they want it to be a crime, but at least got it up when it's going to game the day a little bit. And I can dig a few go lame. They're sort of an attempt at categorizing like the entertainment industry to it then. Like in the first one you had something of a horror that definitely reminds you of like reality prank show to it then. And this one, you do have the Derek Marvel Strange who clearly, it seems to clear they probably care more about just getting good footage than anything else. And I kind of like that angle. I just don't think it executed great to me. The ending really just dropped the ball on a lot of the satire and like creativity that they could have tapped into, I think. You know, and that's a shame, especially when you see what was gonna happen. Um, there's not much of a climax, and the twist ending is a wet fart. Like, you know, just, oh, here we go again. It's a lame ending, and that is the thing with the book. It has a good cup, a lot of potential, and some good moments, but it's a give up of a weak version with a very out of nowhere revolution or weak explanation for why the weird happening. It has some rehashing, and it has the very fourth ending. It get it dark off a bit rocky, but it dark off kind of well in the beginning. It's a little forked. Then it get kind of like annoying. Then it get a bit more fun and a little more unique. And then it has a very weak ending. That just leaves you thinking, well, especially if you compare it to a PC game, which is good fun. And I think there they at least expand on some of the lore and give up some interesting a cool ending, a cool climax, honestly, but this one, none of that, you don't, you feel like you don't like about Homeland than you did going in, they don't, they think that was possible, you think, I got some cool, this is not one of the worst group of people, but a good example of what they tend to be, they have potential to a fan story, but just want to give up a blame version of it, that it make you prefer a first one, because first one, of course, more, you know, creepy or fun or interesting or engaging. One day home my name may not be a big favorite, but I think it's fun and engaging and good world building for a group book. The not as much. You 
that Pikmin game at least gave a, a cool, a pretty cool villain. This one, nah. I feel like it's really interesting than one I definitely I think about to, to put, but wait the potential. In my review, I do propose a rewrite, and it's a Luke idea, but if one I think could have worked to bike it up, add a little more, a bit more commentary, pick a little bit more to what is going on. And if the book is, I would rate this book average. It's like a kick out of 10. It's average. It's okay. Like, I, it cloaked to me a little negative, but I will give it credit in that haggard moment. And I will hit him back. I'm like, come time, I'll enjoy it. Part of it. Part of it, I was like annoyed. And then I believe it's a cow at fun ending. I feel like if that kick and half were a little less fun, I might have dropped the hammer. But because of the fun stuff, I will give it credit. And I do feel like, yeah, the idea is just go good, but I can't really, like, in order to be, like, more negative, the idea has to not be like, a good thing, or be fumbled even more, which is being lackluster. It's definitely a universally declined one. I mean, I hate it entirely, but whether you're, if you're not into Horror Land, but you're already kind of not sure about it, if you're into it, you will find that it doesn't do just Thankfully, we have the Peking game and the Horland Gary, which is not perfect, but does a good job of fleshing out Horland, going into a lore and giving like an interesting mystery, and it's basically doing what the book wanted to do with the shared universe, but does it better. Not perfectly, but better. And that's basically what I got. Game 2 Mountain has a lot of very unique, darker stories that have the potential to have a darker moment, to have a creative, fresh idea. But it not going to pull through in the end. Go is not good. Go. If you've loved the first book and were like, ooh, but got a sequel, might get into it, but don't get your hook up too high. Check out a Peking game, watch a playthrough of that instead. But you might get some enjoyment at part of it, especially if you like shared universe stuff. <laughs> Go bump it before we MQ. Don't share it, forget it. Roland even came out around the same time, kind of man. Go, like, Uh, in the finale of Poland, Toro House came out a value before Avenger. What timeline adds up? <laughs> but yeah, go took a below book. Not terrible, but not good either. It's a shame, but that is what we have. And I think back about it. Go for I will go ahead and show off what my next book will most likely be. It could be Day of the Basement. I'm rereading it at the moment. Go what guy finished that? I will, you know. I'm posting. The, I'm recording this the day before the book goes up, and then we bumped in. Hopefully after it goes up, like a campaign peak. And I don't know when I'm posting this when I record the review. That week. Don't know when that week, but that week. So, um, maybe there'll be a video in between that. I'm not sure. Maybe an edited video if go, but um, if I do that, who you knows? By the way, the trailer for the Disney Plus show came out. I can get her doing a video for that, but I've talked about it enough on Twitter. Go, you can go there if you want to hear me talk about it, but I will be covering it, because don't worry. You will hear everything when that happens. And I'm going to go back Return to Horrorland. Go see you next time for whatever review of the book guy. Not time that I do next. Go, yeah.